Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. In today's video, we are going to discuss on Chapter 3, Selection and Speciation. In today's video, we will only focus on subtopic 3.1, Selection. At the end of this lesson, students should be able to define natural selection, state three types of natural selection such as stabilizing selection, disruptive selection, and directional selection. And we will also discuss about artificial selection. First, let's look at natural selection. It is a survival of the fetus. Natural selection is a process in which individuals with favorable inherited traits are more likely to survive and reproduce. It involves environmental factor as selecting agent. Favorable phenotype will survive while unfavorable phenotype will be eliminated. Natural selection can alter the frequency of distribution of trait in three ways. Let us discuss the three types of natural selection. The first type is stabilizing selection. Second, disruptive selection. And third, directional selection. Natural selection also will change the distribution of phenotype in a population. Each normal distribution curve has two extreme phenotypes and intermediate phenotypes. In stabilizing selection, selection occur will act against both extreme phenotypes and favor intermediate phenotype. It tends to decrease variation because it maintains a particular phenotype. The bell-shaped curve will become narrow and the extreme phenotype has lesser chance to survive. The example for stabilizing selection is infant birth weight. Normal infant with birth weight 2.5 kg can be considered as intermediate phenotype that most likely to survive, while infant born too small with birth weight 1.7 kg can be considered as extreme phenotype they have high rate of mortality because of body system and organ are immature and prone to illness. Infant born too large with birth weight more than 5 kg can be considered has higher rate of mortality because difficulty to deliver. Next, let's us look at disruptive selection. Selection occur will act against intermediate phenotype and favor both extreme phenotype. The bell-shaped curve becomes splitting into two subpopulation. Two extreme phenotype are separated and the two subpopulation will be formed. The example for disruptive selection is size and shape of big of finches that live in Galapagos Island. Birds with larger beak is considered as extreme phenotype that survive. They are efficient when feeding on beak and hard seed. While birds with smaller beak also can be considered as extreme phenotype that survive because they efficient when feeding on small and soft seed. In the other hand, birds with intermediate beak cannot survive because they are not efficient to feed either small and soft seed or big and hard seed. The third type of natural selection is directional selection. This type of selection will act against one extreme phenotype and favor another extreme phenotype. The bell-shaped curve will shift in a one direction. Selection shift toward favorable phenotype because this phenotype is the fittest in the environment and tend to survive. The example for this type of selection is industrial melanism of pepper moth or its scientific name, Biston betularia. 
Pepper moth with black color wing is extreme phenotype during this industrial revolution. Pepper moth with black color wings is extreme phenotype. They have same color with dark green trunk during the industrial revolution. They are most likely to survive and prevent themselves to be seen by predator. While the pepper moth with white color wing show some contrast with the dark tree trunk. They cannot survive because predator can easily see them. Next, let us look at artificial selection. It is a selective breeding that involves human intervention. Artificial selection is the selective breeding of domesticated plant and animal to encourage the occurrence of desirable traits. It will produce a new breed and altering the genotype and producing a new strain of organism for a specific purpose. Artificial selection also involves human intervention. It exerting a directional selection pressure which lead to changes in allele and genotype frequency within population. Artificial selection can be divided into two types which are inbreeding and outbreeding. Inbreeding is mating of genetically similar or closely related individual. When desired trait has been found in one individual, it is bred with close relative to keep the trait in future generation. Homozygosity increase with each successive generation in breeding. It will show less variation within population. For example, is domesticated animal breeding of show animal such as cat and dog. While outbreeding is mating of individual of unrelated or distantly related individual. Two different individual with desired trait are made in hope each trait expressed in the offspring. It will lead to increase in heterozygosity. Example for outbreeding is crossbreed of cow to yield high quantity of milk or meat. Lastly, let us look at the differences between inbreeding and outbreeding. In inbreeding, organisms are mating between close relative parent, while in outbreeding, mating are between unrelated parent. Inbreeding will increase homozygosity in offspring while outbreeding will increase heterozygosity in offspring. Next, inbreeding will show less variation, while outbreeding will show more variation. In the other hand, inbreeding will produce offspring that maintain the desired characteristic of the parent, while outbreeding produce hybrid vigor, which is higher resistant to disease and produce high yield. The problem for inbreeding is less vigor or genetically defective individual, while problem for outbreeding is the organism will losing its pure character. So, that's all you need to know about selection. In the next video, you are going to learn about subtopic 3.2, speciation. Don't forget to answer your formative assessment. And thank you for watching. Assalamualaikum.